And uh, maybe there is a way in which we can think of hope as not something that uh, um, is unreachable. I, I, I have this image of hope. It's, it's a gift that is uh, coming toward us, that is prepared for us. And uh, we find the energy to be hopeful because there is this gift coming toward us. So mm -hmm. hope is not something that we own, that we possess, that we control, but something that is given to us. It helps us to move forward. Mm -hmm. So it's something that uh, is dynamic, profoundly dynamic. And it's something that we receive from others. It's something that we recognize in others. It's also something that we identify in ourselves mm -hmm. when we are surprised that uh, we find in ourselves the energy to do something, mm -hmm. the creativity, the imagination, the patience, the courage, the, the endurance that we thought we didn't have you know, before you know, engaging in the, that particular you know, initiative or, or commitment or taking that responsibility. So I agree with you. Maybe hope is one of the key virtues that uh, help us to deal with the crisis that we are experiencing. I'd like to chime in just while this is wiping. So I just want to, I don't have a question at this point. I just have this want to say that this is a very unusual, for me, it's a very unusual conversation. So I'm a physicist and a scientist. So this kind of um, ethical and moral issues are something that I don't hear discussed in my spheres in public. So I'm thankful for this conversation. It's, uh, it's good to hear it out in public rather than just inside my head. So thank you. It was, uh, it's a, it's been definitely a very interesting and unusual conversation for me. Yeah. No questions for me as of right now. I just thought it was also very interesting how you combine the immigration aspect of it um, and how that is really something that's not talked about publicly as much as a reason for fleeing. But it, if anything, it just puts the emphasis on how bad this problem is if that's a reason to come out of countries and face the troubles that they're facing at the border here. And so, again, thank you for this conversation. It's just getting me to think about some issues which I usually don't think about. But, uh, yeah. So I, I approach things very, in a very dry scientific way. I say, just give me the facts. But I understand that most people don't think that way. And uh, I have to talk to the, late, to the general public. That's not a very helpful approach. So once again, thank you for this conversation. Maybe not, maybe honesty, but not the brutal part. How's that? Yes, and that's, uh, that's a matter of opinion. So I understand that sometimes I was being too brutal, so brutal that I was not, I was, it was being counterproductive. So let's say. So thank Hopeful you. honesty. Hopeful honesty, and that's uh, that, it's a subtle change that I need to learn to do in my own conversations. Thank you. In, uh, in Laudato Si, Pope Francis refers to humility. That is uh, interesting uh, because, uh, no, we, he could have, no, avoided mentioning the fact that he's placing himself and invites us to place ourselves in a position of humility. Because as you were suggesting, when we know the facts, uh, uh, the facts talk on their own. So why do we need to add humility? Maybe because we need to be aware that uh, truth cannot be forced and uh, we need to find a way in which together we uh, realize the complexity the difficulty and the urgency of what's happening and what we should do to care for our planet. Thank you for watching the Future Frogmen conversation series. Please check out our website at www.futurefrogmen.org.